Hello, I'm on the facts of Mars, and here's a call from Scientific American, of all places, uh, to colonize Titan. Now, for those of you who've never heard of Titan, I'm sure you're out there, these colleges don't teach you much, other than Soviet-style propaganda. Titan is one of the most famous moons of Saturn. Now, it's very cold there. Make no mistake. They're, what they're saying is Titan is the most habitable of all the uh, different worlds that we see in the solar system. Uh, Titan is similar in many ways to the Earth, it's true, except for it's incredible distance from the sun. So, let's look at the article. The idea of a human colony on Titan, moon of Saturn, might sound crazy. You think? Its temperature hovers at nearly 300 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, and its skies rain methane and ethane that flow into hydrocarbon seas. Nevertheless, Titan could be the only place in our solar system where it makes sense to build a permanent, self-sufficient human settlement. Now, now remember that part about uh, its rather unusual precipitation, ethane and methane. Remember that. We reached the conclusion after looking at the planets in a new way, ecologically, we consider the habitat that human beings need and search for the conditions in our celestial neighborhood. Our colonization scenario, based on science, technology, politics, and culture, presents a thought experiment for anybody who wants to think about the species' distant future. Yeah, I'll say it's distant. Uh, we're not going to get there with chemical rockets, I don't think. And you'd have to have years and years of supplies on board. We expect human nature to stay the same. Human beings of the future will have the same drives and needs that we have now. Practically speaking, their home must have abundant energy, livable temperatures, and protection from the rigors of space, including cosmic radiation, which new research suggests is unavoidably dangerous from biological beings like us. Up to now, most researchers have looked at the moon or Mars as the next step for human habitation. These destinations have dual advantages of proximity and of not being clear, clearly unrealistic as choices where we should go. That second characteristic is lacking in other bodies near us in the inner solar system, Mars, Mercury, and Venus. Mercury is too close to the sun with temperature extremes and other physical conditions that hardly seem survivable. Venus's atmosphere is poisonous, crushingly heavy, and furnace hot due to a run, runaway greenhouse effect. Might be possible to lift suspended by balloons high up in Venus's atmosphere, but we can't see how such a habitat, habitation would ever be self sustaining. But although the Moon and Mars look comparatively reasonable destinations, they also have deal-breaking problems. Neither is protected by magnetosphere or atmosphere. That is a lie. There is some protection on Mars, obviously. That is bullshit. So that is a lie. Like that cosmic rays and energetic particles from distant supernova bombarded surfaces of Mars and the Moon. People can't live long term under the assault of GCRs. Well, it's been in the news that they're going to try. Cancer causing potential is powerful. Radiation has long been known. All those qualities remain poorly uh, qualified. So it goes on to talk 
about radiation. I'm going to skip a lot of this. Beyond Mars, the next potential home among the moons of, is among the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. There is there are a dozen choices among them, but the winner is obvious. Titan is the most Earth-like body other than our original home. Titan is the only other body in the solar system with liquid on its surface with lakes of methane and ethane that look startlingly like water bodies on Earth. Rains methane on Titan, occasionally fueling swamps. I told you, remember what it's raining. For protection from radiation, Titan has a nitrogen atmosphere 50% thicker than Earth's. Saturn's magnetosphere also provides shelter. On the surface, vast quantities of hydrocarbons in solid and liquid form lie ready be used for energy. Although the atmosphere lacks oxygen, water ice just below the surface could be used to provide oxygen for breathing and to combust hydrocarbons as fuel. Now here's the uh, boner here. This is one that uh, sinks this. It's cold on Titan at minus 180 degrees centigrade or minus 291 Fahrenheit, but thanks to a thick atmosphere, residents wouldn't need pressure suits, just warm clothing and respirators. That is a lie. You are a liar, 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 pants on fire. Uh, that's just unbelievable bullshit. Housing can be made of plastic and produce from the unlimited harvested resources on the surface and could consist of domes inflated by warm oxygen and nitrogen. The easy construction would allow huge indoor spaces. Uh, but getting back getting back to what they said, it's cold on Titan, but you wouldn't need pressure suits. Uh, the suits wouldn't have to be pressurized well, they might have to be pressurized. I'll have to check into the uh, pressure on Titan, but here's the thing. You have to have more than warm, warm clothing and respirators. There's no oxygen to breathe. So you're going to have to have oxygen tanks, not respirators. But I'm going to say that again. There's no oxygen there, so were you to wear respirator, a simple respirator, first of all, your lungs would fr freeze first breath you took, assuming they're right about temperature. And the second thing is that you can breathe because there's no oxygen. If the respirator uh, filtered out everything that's harmful, you couldn't breathe anyway. So I'm a little, uh, I'm a little dismayed at scientific Americans lack of understanding of the subject, to be honest with you. And it says uh, people there could fly like birds with wings on their back. How, how could we get there? Currently, we can't. Unfortunately, we probably can't get to Mars safely either. Without faster propulsion, limit in time and space associated with GCR doses for astronauts are unduly harmed. We need faster propulsion to go to Mars and Titan for Titan much faster as the trip currently takes seven years. This is fantasy, folks. Uh, let me explain something. Not only couldn't you breathe, but uh, you would have to have special protection because it rains ethane and methane. And if those were to land on your clothes, just ordinary, you're going to need more than ordinary warm clothing. I mean, come on. 
You would need a heated air supply or your lungs would freeze. Well, you couldn't breathe what's there anyway. So you would need basically an air supply and a full suit. Because if you get rained on by liquid methane or something, you're going to freeze instantly. We're not even talking Arctic-style cold here. This is far beyond that. Well, there you have it. There's uh, today's uh, mad science update. This isn't going to happen. It's just, I'm surprised Scientific American, I'm really surprised and uh, they would even put out an article like this. Uh, it's going to, even if we had a propulsion system to get there, we uh, are going to have many more problems than uh, just propulsion. No one's ever attempted to even go through, you know, deal with raining methane, methane. What happens when it freezes on you? You're going to be stuck or something. This is just utter poppycock. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.